Thanks, Eli. Um, and, and thanks also to, uh, to your entire team at R Street for creating the space for today's conversations. My foundation uh, has, has been supporting conversations like this for almost three years now. And during that time, I've had an interesting perch to listen and learn from folks like Chris Riley, uh, Rebecca Trombull, and Katie Harbath, folks who are all here today. Um, and I, I have to give the obligatory nod to the fact that this is the first time I've met most of them in person. Um, so so uh, it's good to, good to see everybody off of, off of, uh, off of Zoom. Um, in the past couple of years alone, though, the public dialogue on online content governance has gained speed and evolved amidst extraordinary circumstances, a contentious election, and a global pandemic. We've seen government and industry try to contend with growing public recognition that the status quo for our digital public square isn't working. A quick look at Twitter will tell you that more often than not, the proposed interventions come up short failing to reconcile a vision for a better future state with the high value that all of us place on an internet as a forum for safe, open exchange of ideas and information, free of the risks of censorship by institutional powers. One reason Knight Foundation has supported work like this is that our institutions haven't evolved as fast as online technologies, and institutions now include the private technology companies whose algorithms mediate our online encounters with information and each other. These institutions haven't kept pace with rapidly changing social and political dynamics around the world, di dynamics driven in no small part by the widespread adoption of internet technologies. And amid these shifting tides, Knight and Gallup have spent much of the last year studying how Americans are thinking about online life in the context of our democracy today. They use social media more than any other type of website or app and huge majorities appreciate how digital platforms make it easier to connect with family and friends and affinity groups. While they generally steer, steer away from politics online, our study finds, Americans report that their encounters with political conversations and content does indeed make them more likely to be active in the democratic process in, in, in real life. Yet more than eight in 10 are concerned about misinformation, hate speech, abusive language and bullying online and about the size and power of large technology companies. Almost 90% agree that, the social that social media aids the spread of misinformation, extreme viewpoints and harassment or threats. And critically, the study also tells us that over six in 10 Americans, including bipartisan majorities, say that elected leaders aren't paying enough attention to tech issues today. And this suggests that voters lack confidence in our lawmakers' ability to tackle these challenges credibly. Knight Foundation began investing in research to help bridge the credibility gap by giving leaders in government, industry, and civil society a sound basis for policy. In addition to commissioning our own research with partners like Gallup, we've been intentional about resourcing a growing interdisciplinary field that seeks to understand and proactively inform responses to the growing role of digital media in our society today. We're investing in people and places that are generating the new knowledge, the actionable insights, and the talent pipeline of experts that society can turn to, the same way we turn to public health in a pandemic. Since 2009, we've committed more than $60 million to grow this field with support to a range of universities and independent policy organizations around the country, including R Street and the Institute for Data, Democracy and Politics at GW, among, among, 50, among 50 others as well. We've invested in social scientists, computer and data scientists, legal scholars, humanists, the list goes on, all to ensure a steady stream of independent nonpartisan research and new legal and policy thinking that advance the public interest and fundamental democratic values. The horrific events unfolding in Ukraine have raised the stakes, underscoring once more that in the current configurations, the structures that once helped, that once helped advance democracy and liberal values have not been able to stem the wave of authoritarian sentiment at home or abroad, or to respond confidently when the moment demands immediate action. Katie Harbath reminds us that through 2024, we will witness an unprecedented number of global elections. Today's conversations recognize the need for normative frameworks to address the attempts to leverage digital platforms to subvert democracy while also upholding our values. We need more forward-looking thinking like this. Today's conversations also show the need for pluralistic multi-stakeholder engagement. 
I'm particularly delighted to see that this program's roster brings together experts from different perspectives and sectors, including folks who have been in the trenches weighing the kind of tough, tough content decisions that are animating the public debate today. We need more of this. And finally, today's conversations underscore the need for credible conveners who, like our hosts today, are working to advance the public interest. We need more of you. I'm grateful that you see Knight Foundation as a partner. And with that, I'll hand it over to Chris Riley. Thanks very much.